Do you need to scan an A3 but only have an A4 printer? Well today I'm going to show you how you can scan without any problems. You need to watch the blooper reel at the end of this. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Benita of Benita Doodles and as I said at the beginning of the video I'm going to show you how you can scan A3 onto an A4 printer. You can do up to A2 as well but it's a bit more trickier so that may be in a different video if enough of you request that I show you. Just pop in the comments the word A2 and I will have a look at doing another one for you. My previous video I have done for this was very shaky. It was done in the old living room before I moved into my office. I thought I would make a better video for you today because it's much clearer in my office. It's easier to see and yeah, we're just going to crack on and I will show you how you can scan an A3 on an A4 printer. Okay, so I'm um, recording from two angles. You've got this camera here, hi. That is recording over here, just so you can see how I access the printer, the best way to lay it down. I've also got a camera just up above, so you can get more of a bird's eye view, so you can see more of a precise, detailed version of it. So I've got here an Epson XP422 Home Expression uh, expression home and it works perfectly for me I'm really really happy with how I can scan on here I can scan in extremely high DPI not that it's needed uh, printers generally only print at 300 DPI so yeah let's crack on and show you so the reason I've got two different types is there's a very specific reason so we have drawings illustrations letters whatever you want to scan which have edge to edge so like this illustration I've drawn here, I have gone from one edge all the way to the other. So I've covered the entire page. We've also got the second type, which has got more of a border around it. So we've got a bit more flexibility. And my microphone is miles away. It's not anymore. So God knows how that sounded. Back to normal. I'm such a techie girl, aren't I? I'm really doing a good job here. Thumbs up for me. Okay, so this has got a more of a border around it. So uh, yeah, there's two different ways that we're going to scan this. So the first one we'll do with the edge to edge. So you'll see that when I put in the new bit of video, which will probably land about here somewhere. So make sure your scanner bed's nice and clean. Don't usually sleep where you can if you want. It's how us professionals do it. So we know that A4 is exactly half of an A3. So edge to edge or side to side, there's normally a little bit of give on your scanner. So just make sure that you choose one edge and you need to have the one edge because that's the edge you're going to use when you flip your work to then scan the second side in. So I'm gonna choose the right hand side just because it's easier for me and make sure we're at the very, very back here. So you can see that I'm completely lined up. Now this makes it, when you come to stitch it together in Photoshop, much easier to do. So we then just pop that lid down, keep it as stable as you can, apply a little bit of pressure on the top because where we have this lip, you will get a bit of shadowing underneath on your scan. So just apply a little bit of pressure on top or put something heavy on top and then scan as you would normally. Once you are done, you then simply turn your artwork, put it in again, and scan again. Now, what I would do as extra precaution is actually do three scans in total, not two. I'll do this because in the UK this is swearing, so let's do this. So three. And the reason we're gonna do three is when you stitch together, when you have edge to edge, you tend to miss the middle section, which doesn't give you the clear, crisp lines that you need. So you're essentially scanning exactly half. So when you come to stitch this middle part, it won't be clean and crisp, which is how you want it. So your third scan, no, no, uh, I can't count. One, two, three, four. 
take one away we have three our third scan what you're going to do is you are going to ignore this back bar here and you're going to go as far back as your printer will allow you so as far back so i'm actually tapping against the lid of my printer right now just make sure your edge still marries up here make sure this bit still marries up and just tap on the back to make sure you're as back as far as you can. Now, please do not ruin your artwork doing this. So just allow it to have a bit of movement as you shut that lid. So when you scan, it's now scanning further up your page. So when you come into Photoshop, you're gonna have three stitches that you can then lay all on top of each other use your transparency change your layer transparency so you can see underneath and easily line all three up then you can use the I, there's a stitching video which i will link at the end of this one which shows you how to stitch in photoshop really really easily so you can use that tool to then stitch your artwork together and as you can see there's far less than a4 hanging out the other side so what you've essentially done is you've done two middle parts and then you've skipped a bit off the top but you've come further down the page so you can scan all three and then stitch together. Simples. So when we come to do the border version it's a lot easier in all honesty because you haven't got to worry about trying to get this middle section in here. So the first thing you would do is without losing where you are on your picture so on my watercolor here i know that i can come down to this edge so i'm just going to put my finger there and i know that when i come to this edge if i go all the way to the edge of my printer i've got room to play so i can then pull that down give it a bit of wiggle room because you don't want to ruin your artwork hit the scan button remember to apply a little bit of pressure just to stop that bridging shadowing too much scan it don't let it eat your hand on the way turn it round again go as far back as it will allow you without losing your artwork so on here i have purpose watercolor splatters on the bottom here so these are the my lowest so i would just very gently go over I don't know maybe a centimeter and then I would scan again I would then flip to Photoshop after I have scanned my work in and then I would stitch the two together again I will pop the link in the end of the video for you so you can see how to stitch your scans together and then that way you have nice clean scans available for you ready for the printers Hopefully that was helpful to some of you. As I say, it's possible to do it on an A2 sheet of paper. It's a bit more complicated. But again, if you would like me to do a video showing you how to, just pop A2 in the comments. Also, there is a way that you can actually take photos using your camera phone or using a DSLR camera. Again, I can show you the best methods and the best settings to be able to do that on. To uh, If you haven't got a scanner, then you can take photos to make them print ready. Again, pop in the comments DSLR if you would like me to do a video specific to that and how you can get ready for high quality print. Of course, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer what I can. If you liked the video, I would love a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell button to be notified of when the next video is available for you. I generally upload about three times a week and they range from topics like this to me drawing tutorials and I'm also live every Wednesday so come and join me and I shall see you on the next video. Hey guys welcome back to my channel it's Benita here from Benita Doodles and today I know don't start like that it's rubbish does that sound oh everyone's so perky that was better wasn't it off my desk.